Hello my friend, how are you doing? So uh, in this video, I just want to show really quickly how you can run a MENOVA or a multivariate analysis of variance in SPSS. So on a nutshell, a multivariate analysis of, of variance is essentially an analysis of variance when you have multiple variables. In other words, more than one uh, dependent variable. So when you have two, three, 10, 50, as many as you want. And the example that I have here um, is a fictitious uh, data set, okay? So a fictitious data set. And imagine that if, um, if before going to a music festival, you had to go on the website to uh, buy your ticket. And when you visit the website, you would see different types of uh, advertisements or overall appeal on the website. A f one group saw the website within sexual um, ads, in other words, with a sexual appeal on the website. Uh, another group would see the website with a humor appeal. In other words, the website trying to make you laugh. And the last group here, the control group, is the one that just saw the website with a normal appeal, neither uh, sexual uh, or humor. And the measurements, there are two main variables here that were measured. Uh, one was merchandise purchased. In other words, how much um, of merchandise they bought before going to the festival. Uh, if they bought uh, t-shirts or pens and cups, uh, wristbands, any sort of merchandise. And uh, the beer vouchers. So how many beer vouchers they bought in advance together with a ticket before going to the festival. Okay, So seeing different types of, uh, of uh, appeals on the website and how much they purchase in terms of uh, merchandise and also in terms of beer vouchers um, before attending the festival. So if you want to run the multivariate analysis of variance, click here on top on Analyze, and I'm going to scroll down to gener General Linear Model, because it's just another form of linear model test, um, and click here on Multivariate, okay? So click on Multivariate, and this window here pops up. So on the dependent variable list, of course, you're going to include here all of your dependent variables. So in the case here is the number of merchandise, and also the number of beer vouchers that they bought. The fixed factor are the actual uh, groups that you have, in our case here, are according to the marketing campaigns, so the, the sexual ad, sexual uh, uh, appeal ads, the humor appeal ads in the control group, and these are, of course, nominal, nominal variables. And you could include here the covariates, but I don't have any covariates in this example, but you could include the covariates and if you include the covariates, you would not be running a MENOVA, but instead a main COVA, so a multivariate analysis of covariance. But we don't have any covariate here, so we just leave it blank, and we're not running, we're running therefore a MENOVA. So a few things to click on here. On model, we just leave it as default as it is. Contrast, I'm gonna click on contrast, is important here. So on the contrast, we can change the contrast. I'm gonna click here on simple um, because then we can see interactions between the, the groups, contrasting between the groups. I'm gonna click on simple. Very important to click here on change. Only after you click on change that it actually changes the labeling here on top. And the reference category, you have the options here to either last or first. I'm gonna leave it here as last because as you can see here on my on the data set that I have here, here in the group of the bottom is the control group. So it's of course always interesting to compare in relation to the control group. So I'm going to leave it here contrasting with the last. Click on continue again. The plots, I'm not going to click on plots because as you're probably aware, the uh, the graphs and or the plots in, statistics in SPSS, they don't look so amazing. So I'm just going to leave it in blank. Post hoc. Uh, I'm going to click on post hoc and the post hoc test for I'm going to drag here marketing campaign because I want to know the interactions between uh, sexual appeal, uh, humor appeal and the control group. And because on this data set, I have the same sample size in each group, I'm going to select here on Tuki. Normally, if you would have differences in sample sizes, you could uh, select here Schiffer. But since I have the same equal size, I'll select uh, two key. Click on or continue. The um, estimated marginal means, I'm gonna select here marketing campaign, so I can have the display of the means for each of the groups, of the separate groups. Click on continue, save, I'm gonna leave it. Options, few things here. First of all, I'm gonna click on descriptive st statistics. 
So we can have our averages, our also called means, the standard deviations, and so on. I'm gonna click on estimated defect sites. Uh, that's especially important when running experiments. So it's always relevant, always important for you to report your effect size. And the same thing with the observed power. The homogeneity of variance, uh, homogeneity tests I'm going to include because that's an important assumption test in the MANOVA. I'm going to click on continue. The bootstraps, we don't need them here. I'm going to go on OK. And all right, we've got some results. So let's go through the main things that you need to look after, uh, look out for in the results. So first table is the between subject factors. So we have N here for our simple size. So as you can see, we have 10 people per group. That's why before on the post hoc, we chose Tuki. And these are the three groups that we have, the sexual ads, the group that saw humor ads, and the group, the control group, that's all a, uh, just a normal appeal on the, on the, on the website. Here we have the descriptive statistics. So the number of merchandise purchased per group. So the group that saw the sexual ads bought on average 4.9 items. The ones that saw humor group uh, on average 3.7 items. The control group on average three items. The number of beer purchased, wow, 16, an average of 16.6 .6, um, vouchers. The ones that saw the sexual ads uh 14.1 beer vouchers uh per uh when they saw the humor ad and the control group bought on average 15 um 15 beer vouchers if we scroll down we have the box here for the equality of covariance and that's an important assumption for the manova and basically the manova would assume equal variances uh, uh, between them and as you can see, we have here a significant value, which, mean that, which means that um, the assumption has not been met, which is not a, exactly a good thing when the assumptions are not met. Um, yeah, so here we have the multivariate test. And the important one for us here is the second row, the, the marketing campaign, which is our manipulation. And here, SPSS will give us four different types of um, results. Uh, the place trace, the Wilkie's lambda, uh, Houghton links trace, Roy's largest uh, root, and usually when all the assumptions are, are met and there are more than the equality of variance um, um, for the manova, but I think going through all of them is beyond the scope of this video. Um, so usually when all of the assumptions are met, normally you would report the Wilkie's lambda. When the assumptions are not met, not, not all of the assumptions are met. Usually you would you would uh, use the Pelice trace. Um, also, not a coincidence that in the majority of studies that you would see with the Manova or a great deal of studies, they will be reporting the Pelice trace. Potentially, that's the reason why. Um, when we look at the significance level here for the Pelice trace, it is significant. Therefore, indicating that in the uh, manipulation that we have for the um, sexual ads, the humor ads, and the uh, control group, there is an effect here. And therefore, we should look on further in our results to see where these significant um, interactions are. It gives us here the partial eta square. The partial eta square is used, excuse me, for the effect size. So especially when you're reporting an experiment, it's always very important to report your partial eta squared. The same thing with your observed power, because it then it will give us an indication of the strength of the, of the manipulation that you have. Here on the next one, we have the Levine's uh, test for equality of error variance. And the most important thing for us is that all of the re results here are non-significant. If we had here a significant result, again, it would not be a good thing and we should be worried, but at least here they're all non-significant. Then it gives us the test of between subject effect and we can ignore here the first two rows. The most important for us is the third one, the marketing campaign, which is the one where we actually have our manipulations. Then it will give us here two sort of sub rows. The first one, which is the number of merchandise purchased, and the other one, the number of beer vouchers purchased, and that is our, our dependent variables. As we can see, for the merchandise, there was no effect. 
here a significance level. Um, but for the number of beer vouchers purchased, we have a significant value, and therefore we have significant differences, interactions between the three groups of um, that of the of our manipulation. Yeah. So very interesting results we've got here. Now the um, the contrast. So if you remember before, we did a we selected for a simple contrast, and we selected in relation to the last. So if you look here in the bottom of the table, the reference category is three, which is the coding for our last final group, which is the control group. So in these two rows, we have comparing here level one, which is the uh, sexual um, ads, and here level two, which is the humor ad. So the first one I'm comparing here, the sexual with the control group. If you see here the number of merchandise purchased, our significance is is uh, it, the result is non-significant but if we see here the number of beer vouchers purchased we have here a significant interaction between um, group one which is sexual ads and also the control group so very interesting and when comparing the second group which is the um, the humor ad and the control group for the number of merchandise purchased, we have a also a significant interaction here. So also very, in, very interesting and non-significant for the beer um, vouchers. So look how cool this, um, this uh, fictitious da the data set is, right? So if it was real life, it would be very interesting. So then it gives us again the multivariate um, test results. So we have here again the Pilates trace. Uh, indicating a significant result, um, but this is just a replica of what we had before, and I can show you this really quickly. So the Pilates trace is node 12, and the partial eta square is um, 0 0.208. So if I scroll back, you're gonna see here. So the um, for the marketing campaign, the Pilates trace is node 12, the partial eta square 0 0.208. Yeah. So just to reaffirm you that. It's showing us the result again. And then because the, the um, our Pilates trace was significant, it is interesting to have a look at the univariate test results. So it's gonna give you here um, the contrast between them two. Yeah, and again, highlighting that for the beer vouchers, it is um, significant. It gives us here the, um, the descriptive once again, so the marginal means, and we can see for the beer vouchers, the highest value is the um, the sexual ads, and then in second the control group, and in third the the humor ads, and potentially that's the most important, the most interesting one for us to look, which where we had the significant interaction. So here it gives us the multiple comparison, which is the post hoc test, and if you remember, because we had equal sample sizes, we chose um, Tuki. So here we can see all of the interactions. So basically, in a mo in a in a uh, um, in a post hoc test, yeah, the multiple comparison, the multiple comparisons that it does is all of the possible combinations between our three groups. So if I have sexual um, humor and control group, imagine if they are A B C. Here in the multiple comparison, it's going to compare A with B, A with C, and then B with A, B with C, C with A, C with B. And it's exactly what it does. So it compares sexual and humor. So if I contrast sexual and humor for merchandise, it is a non-significant interaction. If I compare sexual ad with control group, also non-significant. And then it compares humor with sex. It's non-significant. It's the same interaction as here on top. Humor with control group, also non-significant. So I have no significant interactions here for merchandise, but I already knew this from, from the tables before, right? So, but for the beer vouchers, I will have significant interactions. So if I contrast here sexual ads and humor, there is a significant interaction. If we saw the, the means, we saw that sexual ads would lead people um, here, on, on my, here on my, uh, on my means, the sexual ads here with a greater amount than humor. So when they were exposed to sexual ads, they ended up buying more um, beer vouchers, which makes a lot of sense. Um, when contrasting sex with a control group, non-significant humor with sexual ad, it is significant, just a replica of the result here on top. 
when I contrast humor with a control group, non-significant. Yeah, control group with sex, non-significant. Control group with humor, non-significant. All right. So on a nutshell, the, these are the main steps that you would go through to run a MANOVA, again, a multivariate analysis of variance when you have multiple, uh, more than one dependent variables, okay? And to finish off with a musical suggestion, I would suggest you a positive song since maybe you're having a hard time with statistics. I would suggest you to listen to The Rain Song by Led Zeppelin, a beautiful song. The Rain Song by Led Zeppelin, all right? So, on a nutshell, this is how you'd run a MANOVA. All the absolute best. Take care and bye-bye.